Hi, this is Keith Townsend from VirtualizedGeek.com. You're watching how to install Windows 2012 and VMware Workstation. This is in preparation for a complex series of labs that Jonathan Frapier did over on VertExpert.com. So let's jump right into it. Uh, quick overview of my system. I have a 8-core i7 system with 24 gig of RAM, Windows 7, um, a, a single SSD and a two terabyte SS SATA drive. This isn't very different than the lab that Jonathan used in his workstation. A couple of key differences is that he's running, running Windows 8.1. Uh, we both have very similar system specs, uh, but my SATA drives are not in any type of RAID configuration. So after we launched VMware Workstation, the actual creation of the VM is fairly simple. We're going to create a new virtual machine. In this lab, there's really no good reason to do an advanced configuration. We will do that in future labs, but not in this lab today. We're going to choose the install media for the OS. In this case, again, we're using Windows Server 2012 R2. For those of us that don't have access to Windows Server 2012 media, we can download that from Microsoft. And Microsoft does give you a 180 day eval, uh, 180 day eval time for a Windows Server. It's important to note that even on a budget, you can do a quite extensive lab. Both VMware and Microsoft are quite generous with their uh, evaluation periods. VMware Workstation, uh, now as of today, the most current version is 11. You can get that on the 30 day eval period. And then VMware ESXi products, uh, the evaluation period is actually 60 days. So this is all stuff you can do on a very small budget. And even after you're done with VMware Workstation 11, those VMs you can still use in VMware Player, which is a free solution. And we're going to select the Windows 2012 image. And then we're going to tell VMware Workstation what OS this is. So we're going to call this a template because uh, in, future, in the next course, we'll actually show you how to clone a server based on uh, the template that we're going to choose today. And I'm going to store this template on one of my uh, FET spinning drives as opposed to taking up precious space on an SSD. So we're going to go ahead and select all defaults at this point because, again, this is just a template. Notice that Jonathan mentioned he left the memory at 2 gig. We're going to do that again. And we're going to use we're not going to do anything special with networking, uh, at, at least at this point. At some point, we may do something a little bit more complex than an added network. But again, for the template, we just want to get the base OS laid and then have the all the updates deployed. The reason why we're going through this process of creating a template, if you've administered Windows environments before, you know that one of the biggest pain points is managing updates. So if we create a VM with all the updates, we can then, then any VM we clone from that point forward will at least have that base set up update. The, there's an important note that Windows Server 2012 R2 does not come with the necessary drivers to support the default SCSI controller workstation. So we're gonna go ahead and add a hard disk, a SATA disk, so that it makes the install, at least for this lab, a bit simpler. If you're using an older version of Windows Server or potentially Workstation 11, which might have solved this challenge, then you don't have to worry about this step. And we're going to do defaults outside of just adding, selecting the SATA disk type. We'll go ahead and power on the virtual machine. After we boot up the virtual machine, now it's just a matter of walking through the Windows Server setup and then installing VMware tools. There is no need to walk 
to show this over the video. Uh, just make sure you install all the updates so, so that when we create future virtual machines based on this template, you save yourself a ton of time from installing updates.